Um, what do you think right now about the North Korea possibly not coming to the table when it seemed like they were actually going to meet with the president and, and have conversations about their... Like, this, is the, this is the reason that the national security team isn't releasing or undoing any sanctions until or unless he makes that change. His people are starving. Even China is cooperating in cutting off their flow of funds. So if he doesn't come to the table now, then his replacement uh, will come to the table after he's overthrown. What do you think are the next steps for the administration and even uh, for, for Congress? What can they do in the situation? Now, the president has set a course, and we stay the course. And if we stay the course, he is dried up from the money that funds his regime. And ultimately, after 70 years, this is the first time we've had this kind of discipline. And if we stay to it, uh, unlike Iran, uh, if we stay to it, then in fact we can bring him to the table or his successor. Do we give in the U.S.? Do we give in to any of his demands? I know they're upset about the uh, military drills that are going on right now. No, they're not. That's a false claim. Uh, they previously understood them. They're historic, and they really have. This is a trumped-up uh, excuse not to meet with South Korea and for him to look like he's taking a tough stance. But ultimately, his regime is crumbling uh, under the restraint of limited funds. So his choice really is come to the table now or someone will come to the table later. Yeah, the drills have been going on for a while. They've, so been, going on, they've been going on for years. Uh, this is, a, this is a, an interesting reason to, uh, to claim it. But the reality is he's the one in a box. And as long as the president keeps him in a box, which is very clearly what President Trump wants to do, uh, eventually we will get to where we have a meaningful dialogue on real change. Uh, but I still hope and pray that they can reach some kind of an agreement. But I'm not, I'm not hopeful. Do you have any advice for President Trump at this point, going forward, what he should do? Well, I've always had advice to him to know his uh, subjects, rely on people who have greater experience in the arena uh, so that he cannot have expectations that are unrealistic. He, he thinks, uh, as presidents do, that anything, that they can make almost anything happen, but that's not always true. Coming into this, I'm on the Foreign Affairs Committee, and of all the challenges we face with, with China, with Russia, with Syria, with Iran, I think most people on our committee agree that the most imminent threat we face was that of North Korea. Um, and the progress we made have been pretty substantial. You know, to have a North Korean dictator step into the DMZ for the first time since the 1950s, um, having met with Pompeo, uh, a potential meeting next, uh, next month with the president, um, it's, it could be big, so it's, it's good. We welcome the progress. What do you make of this news that they may actually back out and not be part of uh, the meeting with the president and that they're concerned right now? involving the military drills, which have been going on for a long time. Right. Are you still optimistic, given those developments, that they may actually back out? Yeah, well, I mean, th th we're getting mixed signals about whether they are actually going to back out. From all everything we're being told, uh, it's still a go. Um, until we're told otherwise, and we're going to hold out hope that it's going to happen.